Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. A national reckoning with sexual assault brings allegations of misconduct to the forefront. And while much of the attention is directed at Hollywood, victims of sexual abuse can also be found behind the walls of the Montana Women's Prison. National statistics with the Bureau of Justice show thousands of female inmates are sexually abused by correctional officers every year. But these stories we rarely hear. Tonight, Q2's Asia Gore is on special assignment to bring us the stories of victims at the Montana Women's Prison and how their abusers remain free. I had gone through a divorce that was very messy and um, I turned to drugs and alcohol. When Chanda Klein was convicted of forgery and drug possession in 1999, she knew she would pay for her crimes with her freedom. She did not expect to pay with her body. He had me upstairs above the gym in the boiler room when I just didn't want it. He grabbed my boobs and was pulling on them hard. And then he wanted to get um, into my pants and I was saying no and he was pulling them down and I was pulling them back up. As Klein later told investigators, the guard raped her and then intimidated her for months to keep her quiet. Her abuser was fired from the prison in 2013 for workplace misconduct, but he's never been criminally charged. It's bad enough that you have to go and you feel guilty and horrible and small to begin with, but to have someone stomp on you in that condition and to be left hopeless somewhere was the worst feeling I ever, ever had. Klein is not the only woman to suffer sexual assault behind bars. Documents filed with the Montana Public Safety Officer Standards and Training Department detail allegations against four detention officers in as many years. Officer John Goodnight surrendered his certificate in 2016 after he allegedly exchanged romantic letters with an inmate. Officer Michael Mansfield fired in 2016 after 14 years at the prison. An investigation revealed evidence of sexual harassment against inmates and female staff. He allegedly offered a $100 finder's fee to any staff or inmate who could find him a girlfriend. Gallatin County marriage records show Mansfield married a parolee who returned to prison under his watch. Officer Manuel Zuniga lost his certificate in 2017 after 12 years on the job. According to documents, Zuniga had sexual contact with inmates, provided favorite inmates with contraband like lotion, shoes and lingerie, and intimidated witnesses. After Zuniga was fired from the prison, he went on to serve on the Canyon Creek School Board. Officer John Koenig lost his certificate after alleged sexual contact with a parolee, along with favoring and flirting with other inmates. And the Department of Correction confirms employment of a staff member named Norman Ritchie was terminated in 2002, one year after he was hired. Marriage records in Yellowstone County show he too married an inmate while she was locked up. The Montana Department of Corrections declined to comment on any of these recent cases, saying they still could result in criminal charges. But Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido tells me his office hasn't received any criminal complaints against staff at the women's prison in at least five years. Garrity rights protect officers who disclose information about a fireable offense from criminal prosecution, but it does not protect them from civil action like revocation of a law enforcement certificate. I think it's one of the most serious things that could happen to a public safety officer. Perry Johnson's office not only certifies officers to work in Montana, but also investigates allegations of misconduct. Currently, I can tell you that we have uh, 70 open allegations that we're looking at. His office has just one investigator for the entire state who reviews evidence and conducts interviews with the officer and his or her accusers. There's no secrets. We're not hiding the ball from anybody. The bottom line is it's got to be fair for everybody that's involved. If Johnson's office revokes the officer's certificate, that officer can no longer work in Montana. But Johnson says that's only been the case since 2014. And the code passed that year is not retroactive. So if you were revoked as a public safety communicator, you could be a detention officer. Marilyn Hamill, a retired guard at MWP, recalls several instances of sexual misconduct. He did a lot more than he should have. And I, you know, 
the girls used to make comments about, uh, well, he's not happy at home. And I go, that's his problem, not yours. Hamill believes inmates sometimes initiated sexual relationships with staff. It's kind of like a 16-year-old. Legally, they cannot give consent to have sex. So 16-year-olds and younger can't give consent either. Um, inmates are the same. Jenny Hansen, the newly hired warden, says the prison is committed to following all 52 standards of the Prison Rape Elimination Act. We're the first facility in the state of Montana that has passed two pre-audits. The most recently released audit from 2016 shows the prison did pass that exam, but a closer look reveals it was in compliant with at least seven standards. One in compliant standard is protection against retaliation for inmates and staff who report sexual misconduct, an issue that Klein says kept her quiet until her release. It was just something I had to do to survive. Hansen believes the recent addition of a caseworker focused on sexual misconduct allegations will further her goal of safety for inmates. They're people first. They're human beings first. And um, they deserve to have their needs met, be protected, feel like this is a safe, secure place to deal with whatever issues they might have been having that got them here. Klein may be a free woman today, but she says the abuse she experienced behind bars is a life sentence. Asia Gore, MTN News, Billings. All right, thanks so much, Asia. Klein, along with several other women, have filed lawsuits against officers and the Department of Corrections. Oftentimes, the terms of any settlement include a non-disclosure agreement. Extreme caution tonight for anyone planning to be out on the roadways. Freezing rain iced over vehicles and Billings area roadways today. And tonight it's expected to get worse. Authorities warn to leave more space between you and the next vehicle because increased braking distance is necessary. Dangerous roadways also pushing hundreds of state wrestlers and their families into the Magic City early today so they can get here ahead of the all-class wrestling tournament and not be stuck at home. And a heads up for students and staff at Pryor, St. LeBray, and Lame Deer Schools classes canceled tomorrow in all three towns. So, Bob, uh, these conditions are actually getting worse right yeah, now. Yeah, of course, we've got all the ice and the rain on the roadways already. And so the good news here is at least the freezing rain has stopped, but it's being replaced with light snowfall. You can see it here the, in South Central Montana. We did have little streaks of rain and freezing rain, and now it's all turning white, and that means it's all snow moving into the region. And because of that, the Weather Service has gone ahead and issued this uh, winter weather warning. It basically includes all of Yellowstone County, Billings, and even into places like Bighorn County. And now it looks like we're going to see maybe four to eight inches of snow and icy roads on top of that. So essentially, if you're going to be traveling around South Central Montana tonight, just about everywhere inside this orange uh, uh, orange graphic here, you're going to be looking at very extremely difficult conditions, travel conditions, due to poor visibility and snow-packed roads, icy conditions all over the place. So please be careful out there. Give yourself plenty of room between you and the car in front of you. Let's go back to the desk. All right. Thanks, Bob. An investigative report that's out today says the Westmoreland Coal Company is to blame for a mine worker's fall to his death last May. That report says the worker died because the company did not ensure that the mine's truck drivers safely dumped their loads. Q2's David Jay joins us now with more details. David. Uh, Janelle Jay, according to the report, 62-year-old Michael Ramsey died when the Caterpillar haul truck he was driving went over the high wall last spring. The report states the mine operator, Westmoreland Coal Company, had knowledge that unsafe dumping was a practice at the Rosebud Mine. That report also states that Ramsey's truck with 98 tons of overburden went over the high wall at around 4.30 p.m. on May 6, 2017. Overburden is what is removed to get to the coal, and the ground uh, failed where that uh, truck was dumping. Company policy states that no equipment shall work on top of the high wall within 25 feet, and the trucks dump short with bulldozers pushing the material over the edge. But the investigation revealed that those policies were not followed, and crews routinely operated equipment within 25 feet of the high wall and trucks did not dump short. The Mine Safety and Health Administration's corrective action includes that trucks will not dump over the high wall under any circumstances, and trucks will uh, also dump short and bulldozers will push it over the high wall. Michael Ramsey had more than 10 years of experience as haul truck operator and had uh, completed annual refresher training just a month before the accident. Jay, Janelle? Thanks, David. Stocks took another big hit today for the second time this week. 
The Dow plunged more than 1,000 points. The market closed today down 1,032 points, 10 percent off its record high just two weeks ago. Now the Dow's 1,033-point decline, its second worst point drop in history, surpassed only by Monday's nosedive of 1,175 points. Coming up on tonight's 530 News, Governor Steve Bullock says he is not rushing into signing a new contract for the state's private penitentiary. And later in sports, the calm before the wrestling storm. Yes, the all-class state wrestling tournament just one day away. Hear from some of the wrestlers in just a bit. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.